Hello, my name is Amir, and I'll be your guide for learning reading XML in Java. Now, I've been using Java for the last eight years, and what I came to realize, the people who have just started in Java or may have little experience with the language, sometimes find it's hard to pass or read or save XML files in Java, or XML files in general. Uh, there is uh, a bit of a learning curve in terms of uh, knowing exactly what an XML file is, and what is it used for? Uh, to my understanding, and I mean to say it's a debatable topic, uh, is that XML essentially is information encoded in totally user-defined format. So at the end of the day, you define what an XML file should contain. And after you've done it, it basically is the easiest way to interchange data, to store data, of any kind. Now what I'm going to teach you in this tutorial is to load and read XML file and create Java object from it. Now Java object, I'm not going to go into detail what a Java object is. If you don't know what a Java object is, then I would say to you is please stop this tutorial right here and go and read a good book which gives you at least an introductory course into what objects or Java objects really are. If you have that concept and they build, then please go ahead and I'll try to explain how XML files are read in Java. Now traditionally, uh, whether it's Java or C++ or any other language, there are two set of APIs which governs reading and writing of XML files. One is called DOM, which stands for Document Object Model. The other is called SACS. Now Document Object Model has, um, I would say, uh, less of a learning curve. SACS is the more efficient of the mob and it has got more of a learning curve. You really, really need to know the nitty gritty of the API to be able to use SACS properly. So what I did, and I came across the web a library called XOM, X-A-O-M, and here is their web page. Now the tutorial would be based on XOM. XOM basically was written in 2004 and it is a very easy to use library for reading and writing Java files or passing Java files for that matter. Now you can head over and download X, XOM from this particular address which basically is www.xom.nu. Once you've downloaded it, basically you can install it here like this I have in the NetBeans API 7.01 from Sun. Uh, I am a Java developer, so what I would like to use is a NetBeans IDE from Sun because it's very tightly integrated with the whole development process of Java. Now just to tell you a bit about XML, XML files as I said are user defined which basically means is that you get to say what goes inside an XML. Let me bring it up for you, like for example look at this. this file essentially stores books and the root element which is basically is the bookstore this is the beginning of the XML file starts the starting point and after that these blocks like book, book ID, name, author, number of copies I made them up they, they are user defined basically you can make them the way you want them to and each tag basically begins with the name which is user defined and has a value and as a end tag which is defined by forward slash and the name again so the root element as I said has a beginning and then the root element has an end which is this now XML files when they are passed by in whether it's Java or C++ or any other language the way the parsers are written is that they treat XML as a tree and let me illustrate that point for you pretty much like this it basically starts with the root element which in our case in this case there are other things which go into XML files such as attributes but I'm not going to discuss them here I want to keep this discussion fairly simple and I'll tell you exactly how to read an XML file in my case what I've done is that my XML file is implemented as a static method and returns an array of book objects when the XML file is loaded. So essentially what happens is that uh, first of all you have to create user, uh, you have to create a string, an integer type 
variables inside this method which basically hold the information which you're going to get from the XML files. So, and this particular method is going to pass this particular file. Now, for the for the um, uh, for the for the duration of tutorial, what I've done is basically hard coded the path to where this XML file is in my uh, IDE, but uh, when you implement it in your own way, you really don't have to hard code the ID. You can just pass the string, and that can string can contain the path to the XML file and wherever that XML file is. Now, for those people again who do not know what an array list is or what an object is, I would say again is please stop this tutorial here and go and read a good Java book as to give you a good idea what an array list is. If you have an idea what an array list is, what objects are, then go ahead. So essentially we start by defining a block of variables and these variables mirror what the information is inside the XML file. And what we do is start is we start with basically a file input stream which is a stream reader in Java. We pass a new file object with the name of the file into it and essentially what you get is a reader. Basically you get an object which now can read the XML file but at this point the file input stream has no idea what an XML file is. All it can do is read this file in as an array of bytes. That's all it knows. Then the basically that's where we come in and start using the XOM API. To use the XOM API all you have to do is bring an import statement which says import nu.xcom and star and what it will do is it will import all the classes necessary uh, you would need to start parsing and reading and writing your own files. So what the builder does, builder is one of the classes in uh, in um, Exxon uh, uh, API parser library and we start by creating a new builder and one of the methods of the new builder called build takes in the file input stream and produces a document. A document essentially is the starting point of your XML file. And what you do is that since, as I pointed out to you in the example, that XML file essentially is like a tree. Essentially starts off with a root element like a tree does. It has got a root and it's got one single stem which comes out of the roof. And then it branches off into various branches, which may be further branching off into various branches. And essentially that's what an XML file really is. At its very basic form, it might just have one branch and that's fine. It might have 100 branches and those 100 branches could be divided into another 1000 branches and that's fine too. And each branch may have its attributes. Now at this point, I'm not going to go into the attributes. That's a tutorial which I will take further down the track and I will define how to pass attributes. But right now what we are trying to do is just pass simple tags which are spread out among the XML files pretty much like the branches would tree. And what we need to do before we start parsing or going away through, we start at the root document. So essentially what will happen is that the document method say get root element will give you the root element. In this case, our root element is bookstore. So essentially that is the starting point into the bookstore. And then what will happen is that once it has got the root element, right? It wants to know how many child elements are there. So, how many child elements are there? We can basically, since most XML files are human readable, we can say how many child. So, we got one, got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, we got eight child objects, and that would be the entry. That basically what it does is child get child element returns a node of elements, an array of elements essentially, which basically says how many child elements are there. Now what you need to do, you need to iterate over the XML documents reaching one block of child nodes at a time. Essentially what you, need, what you will be doing is basically reading this, then once you have read this and put it in the variables you just created to hold this, you're gonna read this. And finally read this. Now that's where the loop comes in. What for loop does is that it knows that okay there are eight entries for example and they might be five or six 
child elements of these. So, so what it does is that it gets the child element which is basically in the form of book right book is a child element of the root bookstore so and we start by getting a element and entries which is this object here saying entries we want to read the first one essentially what happens is that for sake of consistency what I've tried to do is each element which is retrieved I try to name it after the same value for example element book ID is trying to retrieve an element book ID so what it does is that it retrieves the element called book ID which basically is this element for this particular node And what we do is we use the integer, integer class to pass because the, the value you are getting is a string type because it's a text file but we need to convert it into an integer. So we use the method passint to get the value and put it in the book ID here which essentially is defined here. Now we go to the next element which is the name and ex exactly since name is a string so we really don't need to change it and we just put it into book name here. Next element is of course book author, again author, author as in defined here, author. And so we keep looping through each and every element and I will not go through all the elements, I hope you get the picture, I really don't want to be sound pedantic and repetitive in this tutorial. But essentially all you have to do is get the root node then get the child's node associated with that root node and then start passing them one line at a time. Each node essentially is an element. Element could be anything. In my case it's book, in your case it could be shipping, it could be fish, it could be animals, it could be anything. It could be letters, it could be data, it could be a business transaction, it could be a banking account. The list kind of goes on and I hope you get the picture. So essentially we are basically looping through and what we'll do is we will loop through all of this till whatever is the end of file, whatever child nodes are there. So next child node of course is, of course this example is a very simple example of passing XML files. As you get more proficient in using XML file you will find that XML files get a whole lot complicated. And what we do is that every time we loop through this list, we have got enough material now to create a book object. Book object is nothing but a collection of attributes which come together like book name, book author, number of copies, physical copies, e-price and we create a book object. And what we do is when each time this loop runs it creates a new book object and pushes it into an array list. Array list, just to let you know, just give you a very brief introduction, it's a it's a dynamically expanding array of anything. In anything when I have any Java object can be put inside an array list. In my case, I'm putting in a book object. And once it has done it, once it's run all through the loop, it will basically return a book list. Now just to let you know that there is a try and catch block here. The try and catch block is essentially there to trap any exceptions created by this loop. Now at the end of the day again I go back to if you do not understand what exceptions are in Java then please look up something on Google or you can read a book about it. It's, they're essentially there to trap any errors which are generated while the program is running because if you do not trap these errors what will happen is they will cut the Java virtual machine and of course if somebody is using a program it will not be a good experience for them. I hope you have enjoyed your tutorial. Uh, I hope to see you next time. What I will do next time is I will show you how to write and create XML files using the same API called XM, uh, XOM called NU essentially.